Welcome back to Stormworks. This is the Dragonfly. And, um, ooh, this helicopter. Guess what, guys? I figured out how to build helicopters. Ooh. If you've had a hard time with helicopters in Stormworks, get this one. And I'll teach you how to make helicopters just like it. This helicopter handles so well, you guys. It just handles so well. Let's go on a tour here. The first thing we notice is that we are capable of driving it out of the hangar. <laughs> The ones where you have to start it in the hangar and try and hover your way out are the worst. Uh, and uh, this is a setup where the wheels auto-brake, so uh, you don't have to worry about setting the brake manually or anything, and you can also pull them up. All of that stuff works fine. Now you might notice that these blades seem awfully flat. What's up with that? Well, most people use blades with a positive blade pitch. See this? Because positive is the default. But I'll tell you right now, the secret of a good helicopter is to not do that. You see, the, po the positive blade pitch means that those blades are always going to exert an upward force as they spin. So you go up by spinning the blade faster, and you go down by spinning the blade slower. <laughs> That's a bad call. This is the right call. Spin the blade as fast as you can. To be honest, 100 rotations per second it appears to be the best speed. If you spin it faster than that, they kind of seize up. But uh, this is a really, really good speed. They're spinning at the fastest possible speed they can spin, and yet we are not flying off into the sky. What's going on? Neutral blade pitch. They're just cutting through the air. They're not trying to lift us. However, that blade pitch is an argument that we can send to the blades. So when we want to go up, we just tell them to pitch. And we have just the most amazing smooth action mm. Mm. if you've ever played this game and tried to fly a helicopter you probably are uh, are aware of just how smoothly this helicopter handles it feels like it's fake that's how smoothly it handles there's absolutely zero unexpected motion uh, you go up and down just the most graceful it's ever been and that's just because the blade pitch returns back to normal, neutral, every time you want it to. Uh, which means that you just effortlessly um, keep those blades spinning at the exact same speed all the time. You never have any problems with, uh, with you know, um, floating around. You don't have to worry about it accelerating or decelerating the blades. You don't have to worry about trying to get those blades from 30 RPS up to 80 or whatever. Oh, no, no, they're always at 100. Snapping the blade pitch is super fast and easy, so that's why it makes for such a good set of controls. Also, I believe that the more blades you have spinning, the more propeller blades you have spinning, uh, the more stable the vehicle is. That seems to be the case. I can't guarantee that. I haven't done extensive testing, but this has four heavy blades spinning as fast as possible, so it's very stable. Now, we're lining up the fangs, those laser fangs, with the back of this cargo um, container because that's how we, uh, how we know that we are correctly lined up. And then we can drop down and connect it, and up we go. This cargo container feels like it's empty, right? It is not. It is carrying around a heavy battery. The heavy battery is roughly the same weight as our engine core. But it's so unimportant. It's so lightweight that our blades are just like, yeah, whatever, because we can handle all of that stuff on the fly with buttery smooth pitch transitions. Oh, it's so nice. I can come out here and dance on it if I want to. Ah, uh, how fun, right? Um, now, we have a couple of other things we can do. I might as well show you a cool one first. Uh, over here, we have an option, button three, allow remote control. Whoa, what's up with that? Well, if we were to sit here, Oh, no, we can't control anymore because we're allowing remote control. Here's a remote control option. If we were to, say, accidentally fall off, I think that's terminal, so we won't show you, um, we would be able to use this remote control and tell it to fly around, see? I just think that's cute. I don't know if, how it would ever be useful to anybody, but it's just something that feels really neat to be able to do. Another thing we've got, very similar to remote control, is uh, autopilot. So if we take a seat here, we can select where we want to go. Let's go over to that island there. Just click on it, and then we can hit the auto button. We can zoom in. Move on up. Oh, look. 
If we go over to the other side of the helicopter, and yes, you can walk around while it's autopiloting. It is very, very smooth. This is our nose camera, and we can adjust exactly what we're looking at here. And we can try and see our destination. There it is, see it? These new cameras are awesome because they have a laser. This laser does more than just look cool. It actually uh, tells you exactly where whatever it's hitting is in GPS and height coordinates. Super useful for some things, not for this particular helicopter, but still really a cool idea. We'll just return that to point and straight down for reasons that will become obvious in a minute. Now we want to come back here. We're approaching, and this is not really a super fast helicopter. What are we doing? 30? 35? That's pretty standard for a helicopter. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not going to get you anywhere fast, but since we have infinite fuel, uh, it doesn't really matter. We can, we can go wherever we want. And now that we're arrived, we get control back, and we can just drop down uh, to uh, wherever we think will hold this, uh, this cargo. Now, the reason I turned that laser on on the nose and then reset the camera to pointing straight down is, uh, is because it helps us to determine where we are on the ground. See, we now know where our nose is. It's something that's extremely hard to determine due to the lack of any sort of depth cues. Um, so we'll just drop this off right here. What do you think? I think that this looks like a good spot. You notice that we've got a little curly cue on our tail. That's because in situations like this, it's pretty easy to accidentally bump your tail on a rock and then you lose all your tail feathers and then you spin out of control. Anyway, we'll just drop this. Did I hit it? No. I hit F instead of E there. Oh, we dropped it off. Well, let's talk about another way to grab cargo. If we come over here, we can see that there is a whoop, a, a hinge, a, 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 a hinge, a winch. There it is. See it flying around there? You can connect it manually using your fingers, but it makes more sense for us to uh, just drop it down and connect it. Voila. We're using a connect all, um, which is not the strongest connector in the world. This is not intended to haul heavy things. It's not supposed to be quite that frail. Um, normally, this is not a hard thing for it to haul, but it's uh, it's glitched out. Oh no! Um, it appears that we have caused ourselves some harm by glitching our connector through our helicopter. That's fine. I think we've actually got some damage somewhere because it's um, shaking like a leaf all of a sudden. Anyway, just check something. No, it's fine. Anyway, we'll go ahead and just return this helicopter back home using buttons. There's a glitch in the game where if you do that, the helicopter stops working. Every vehicle stops working. There's something stupid. So we'll just reload it and send it back out there. Uh, and uh, we'll drive on out. I'll show you how to do super heavy loads. Oh, let's go ahead and launch a flare. Ciao. <laughs> So the same load, because it's got the same connector, the same kind of loading procedure works fine. We just line up our little lasers with the uh, rear of the um, object. And normally you need some help to do this. Normally you need some kind of assist. But because this handles just so gracefully with no unexpected motions, uh, I find that I have no problems lining it up. Uh, now it is a little bit um, aggressive, the... the the uh, the actual tilting and stuff is just a little bit um, more than you might expect. So, you know, be light with those taps if you want to do this. It's not a big deal. There we are. Drop down, drop down, drop down, drop down, drop down, drop down, drop down. Clink. Did we connect up? We did. Hooray. Now, we can't actually lift it. We can kind of move it around, but we can't lift it. Now, the reason for that is because it weighs way too much. It's full of jet fuel. Blah, 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 blah. So in order for us to actually lift it, we're going to need some help in the form of lift bias. 0.4 should be enough. There we are. And now we can lift it. No problem. Now, the only problem with using lift bias is that you are going to end up popping up into the sky like a cork if you, uh, if you just release that object and let it fall. 
uh, which is why you generally don't release objects and let them fall. Generally speaking, you're supposed to um, drop down and land them. And then when you're landed, you might as well turn that lift bias back down so that you don't fly into the stratosphere. Trust me, you do not want to fly into the stratosphere um, because the, uh, the upward motion will be so fast that just trying to get over here to change the lift bias will almost certainly kill you. No, just... And away we go. Woohoo! So I thought I might as well talk about uh, some of the details about how to build this kind of vehicle. Um, if you just wanted to see a helicopter, that's the helicopter. Go, go grab it if you want to fly around with a helicopter. I'm going to teach you some basic um, things that I did and some, some best practices. The biggest best practice is absolutely the neutral pitch blades. I cannot overstate how much of a difference that makes. I've also got the blades spinning opposite each other. I'm not sure if that matters or not. It should, but I don't know if the game actually simulates it. Um, better safe than sorry, and I also like how it looks. Uh, the rear blades here, keep in mind that you can spin a neutral blade like a tail blade. You can spin these as hard as you want, and it will never generate any motion, any upwards or downwards thrust. So that's why uh, the tail, you also keep spinning real fast. You spin all your blades all the time, and then all you do is adjust their pitch. Now when I'm talking about the pitch, there are two kinds of pitch. Um, there's the collective pitch which is all of the blades, how they're all pitched. And then there's the rotor pitch, which is how the actual rotor itself is pitched. And that will change your vehicle's position. So you use this to actually tilt forward, and you use this to climb into the sky. Now, the reason it can be confusing is because they both use the word pitch, and they're not explained very well. Now I've explained it for you. Hopefully that's fine. Now remember, you don't want these to go above 100 rotations per second. You can experiment with that, but I think you'll find that they seize up. So in this case, we've got our engine chain here producing 100 meters per second, or uh, rotations per second flywheels. These flywheels uh, will never be able to accelerate something to over 100 because they are at 100. Now, if you're not using the clutch flutter glitch, you can do the same basic setup with whatever sort of engines you'd like. Uh, just make sure that you don't go over 100, and getting it as close to 100 as possible seems to be ideal. Now... When it comes to some of the additional features here, um, we have some, some fun ones in the, in the form of a cameras and GPS and stuff like that. Uh, you can download a lot of controllers for that stuff off of the web, including mine. If you go to the workshop, these should be available by now. But um, you're going to find that they often don't do exactly what you want. For example, my... Uh, my GPS autopilot system doesn't output a usable turn or a usable thrust. Um, it outputs a collective signal, and the or a composite signal. And the reason it outputs a composite signal instead is because I am throwing around all of these composite signals. That's what you need to do when you do when you're allowing remote control. If you're allowing remote control, it uses the same composite signals as a seat. So all we've got here is the seat versus the remote control. Which one are we going to use? And then why not just throw in the GPS at the same time? So even if you downloaded my GPS thing, you'd have to know what a composite signal is and how to get stuff out of a composite signal. And maybe that's not for you. But don't feel disheartened. Just find a GPS that does what you would like. Another thing I find important for all vehicles is repair. So in this case, we've got uh, fire extinguishers and welding torches. We probably will never need the fire extinguishers because there's nothing in here that will explode. But the welding torch we might need. We might bump something or damage something, and then we can just heal it up. Um, unfortunately, they can't heal missing blades as far as I know. So if you manage to damage your blades, you're kind of SOL. But if you do damage something up there, it's quite easy to get up there. And this is something I really, really enjoy doing you can reach all of these spots pretty easily. I can even turn off my main power if I wanted to. Um, and even if we go over to the side, we can swing like Tarzan. Oh, rah, rah, I'm going over, uh, over there. Oh, I missed it. And come on, come on. Yeah, grabbed it. And over. Over. 
Come on. E. Oh, I missed it. But you can see how you could repair this ship. Um, like Tarzan, if you really wanted to. You don't have to. I'm just, I'm just giving you the option. And I like doing that just because it's fun. There's a lot of uh, features to help you damage proof this a little bit better, to help you use it a little bit easier. Um, for example, the tail has this little hook on the bottom to keep you from bumping your tail feathers. And uh, there's some safety measures here, and there's also a roof, a little bit of a roof here that, that'll keep you from flying out, unless you fly out right there. That is the only, the only dangerous way you could do it. If you're tipped forward and you jump, you could fly up into the blades. And I figured I'd leave that there because <laughs> it's funny. I also added in some general stuff like heating and um, uh, detecting um, uh, men overboard signals, all that stuff. If we wanted to show you that, for example, we've got this uh, transponder. This, uh, it gives the man overboard signal. You'll often find that you need these in missions. Uh, we, can, we can search for it. Oh my gosh, there's someone nearby with a, with a signal that needs located. I wonder who that is. It was me. Yeah, was there any other stuff I wanted to talk about? I mean, the logic involved here can get a little bit complicated. Um, for example, the the logic in this autopilot is so complicated that I don't have one Lua block, I have two. <laughs> I couldn't fit the logic in one Lua block. Um, so this is a situation where it's easy to underestimate how challenging it is to make a helicopter, but I can tell you for free that it's easier than you think to make a basic one. All you have to do is use neutral pitch. Um, if you're using the gyro back here, that's a, that's a pretty typical way to do it. Always turn on the gyro's auto hover, auto hover. There's almost never a reason not to use auto hover. So here's the gyro's auto hover here. Uh, and once you've done that, it's pretty easy to just connect everything up. But I strongly recommend that you have a, uh, um, a lift bias. And that just means taking the the uh, output of the gyro and putting it into a function block where you add it together with uh, a throttle. And by adding those two things together, we get an output that will allow us to really utilize our our um, um, our helicopter. A lot of these helicopters, when you're first building them, they pop up into the sky like a cork the instant that you turn on the gyroscope. And that's because the gyroscope is set up to think that a certain thing is neutral. What certain thing? Well, halfway between min throttle and max throttle. It thinks that that is neutral. So if max throttle is way stronger than you need because you're making a lifting helicopter, then uh, you need to tone it down. You need to make sure that the output from this is nerfed so that you don't accidentally um, pop into the sky the instant you, you move. And then you can turn it back up when you need to lift something heavy. Yeah, so that's that. This is on the workshop. If you want to uh, experience a helicopter that is actually possible to fly, this is the one. Have fun.